In this video, I'd like to go over the, uh, the standard proof of the existence and uniqueness of a first-order nonlinear differential equation that is in the standard form. I made a video of introduction of the iteration method that was used to um, handle the proof. So I, I recommend you to watch that introduction video of the proof of existence and uniqueness of first order. But I will, in this part, go over the briefly the summary of that introduction. So here's the bit of summary from the introduction. This is about Newton's method, so I'm going to use that baby, the first example you encounter in the Newton's method, to kind of introduce that uh, deduction in a slightly different way. This is even slightly different from what was in the introduction video, but it's more algebraic than geometric method that where you use this tangent line. The first we start with an equation x squared minus 2 equals 0, and then we want to approximate this square root 2, which is the solution. And then you end up at some iteration in iterative and equation, recursive equation, but you can actually deduce that from uh, algebraically from here. Here's how what you do, because we already know how it looks like, so I'm just justifying how you go from here to that Newton's method without even sketching the tangent line, which is following. You can split this x squared, and 2x squared and x squared, like this, and 2 on the other side, and then you divide both sides by 2x. Then you simply end up at here. If you divide by 2x, left-hand side is just x. If you divide this one by 2x, then you have 1 over x. If you divide this one by 2x, and you have x over 2. So if x is a square root of 2, that it satisfied this equation, and of course it satisfied this equation as well. So this is like the differential equation, and you can turn this one into iterative equation. So here's how you enter Newton's method. We're going to turn this one as an x in the an isolated left-hand side, right-hand side in terms of x again. So you can turn this one into xn, and left-hand side is going to be xn plus 1. That's exactly the Newton's method you get out of this polynomial and applying the tangent line and so on. So if the limit of this one exists, you can manipulate like this in multiple and hundreds in a different way, but not all of you, all of them will give you convergent behavior. So Newton's method in particular kind of guarantees if there's a certain condition set up relatively easily, and you can guarantee that this one will converge like this one. So knowing that, we can deduce it like this, then if this converges, then the limit value is the solution of this equation, because the limit exists, and then left-hand side, um, although it's um, n plus 1, limit exists, there will be the same value, left-hand side and right-hand side, they all turn to whatever this value is, which is, can be represented by x. Then once this one satisfied, you know that it has to be positive square root 2, negative square root 2. So that's basically Newton's method. If you turn this one in an algebraic version like this, it can be applied to somewhere that algebra is not quite, um, geometry is not quite available, but you can just imitate this algebraic method. So which is what we're going to do to the differential equation. So here's a Newton's method. Here's some equation that satisfied the x itself can be described in a different operation like this. So it can involve as a function and it is a differential operator. One part that is introduced in the uh, introduction video and, and I'm not going over here is the uh, motivation of the following process. Our original differential equation is y prime equals f of xy. Then rather than dealing with this one, we're going to integrate, we're going to apply the integral operator left and right hand side to um, get the following equation, which is this one. If you integrate it with the definite integral, you have this initial value, and I simplified at 0, and something like this. So this is um, integral equation, not the differential equation, but it's equivalent. So we decided to work, this, uh, work with this one because with this integral, approximation works a lot nicer and easier technically than dealing with the derivative. One liner that might explain why this is so is this um, 
d derivative is a very very local property just what happened on one point and while this integral is more of a global it's about from 0 to x I think that's the one explanation I have the why this one is so much easier to handle theoretically than this one it's very very local condition here and it's all of a sudden very global here I think it is the power of fundamental theorem of calculus but this is the equation. I want you to make the comparison with this equation in the Newton's method. The function in itself is described in some in through this integral operator is function um, in terms of itself. Then you can turn, because it's nicely isolated like this left-hand side, you can turn this one into an iterative process. Like this one here. The first function is going to be the constant function with the initial value. And then after that, we start with the one function. You go through this right hand side define it as a new function and once you have y1 and you stick it in here and calculate this integral and define it as a second function iterative like this just like we did in Newton's function Newton's method if this yn exists in this way then they must satisfy this equation that's the idea there is one hurdle we have to go over with this integral operator um, but that's basically idea. Next part of the thing I'd like to introduce that um, is the phenomenon about the, the similar phenomena, phenomenon about this um, Newton's method. When you do the Newton's method, it has the uh, property of a doubling. Um, for example, if you do the square root that uh, function that we saw, it has the phenomenon of doubling the digits. So if you have 10 digit correct, then when you do this one, Suppose this is the Newton's method we're looking at. Let me show you the method. Newton's method. So here's again. When you start with this some number xn, suppose that has a 10 decimal digits correct, and if you do this one, then this one will have 20 decimal digits correct. Now if you use that one and plug it in there, then the new number will have a 40 decimal digits correct. This, if you think about it, this incredible convergence. Something like that is happening with that iteration method as well. Now we're back to the uh, differential equation. If you repeat it like this, something like that is happening. So that's what I'm about to explain. In the video, we actually play with a specific example, not in the general example like this. But what I'm about to explain um, can be proved when we um, assume our f of xy is in this power series form. It's two variable power series form written as a one variable like um, y is a main variable and treated um, everything else the x part can be gathered in front of y the powers of y like this so there is this function solely in terms of x and y to the first multiplied by some analytic function in, term, um, in terms of x and so on if you can re if we can rewrite this two variable function and organize like this shape of the power series of a two variable and then following can be easily shown well, a few more setup. The y-x is going to be assumed to be a solution. We just assume there is a solution and about to explain how good this uh, method is. That's what we're about to explain. So there is, uh, we are assuming there is an analytic solution. So it has a power series form. And we're truncating this power series not to infinity, but we stop at n. This is called the Taylor polynomial. So we're only looking at nth um, term. So we're comparing in how many Taylor uh, terms are correct instead of a uh, number of decimal places. That's the comparison or analogous uh, situation in here. So here is a statement. If this y-ax is the, has a, um, if the differential equation has an analytic solution and if Tn is the correct nth uh, Taylor polynomial, then this y-nth, this nth iteration, gets exactly nth the correct um, Taylor polynomial. So if you have this nth the correct Taylor polynomial, if you stick it in here, iterate it, and this new function yn plus 1 after you go through the integral and everything, will have um, first n plus 1 Taylor um, polynomial correct and the rest of the part is not guaranteed to be correct. So it's like one at a time, it picks up one correct term at a time. It is not as good as a uh, Newton's method, 
but it at least guarantees that as you do that you will see a more and more correct terms showing up. I push it a little bit further so that um, kind of force it to have the doubling digit phenomenon. So if you're looking at this right hand side, um, the two variable equation in the differential equation, if it is missing this part y to the first, if it happened that a1x is a 0, then a0, x is there, and here it's y to the square, that's what it starts, and then if this part's missing, then we begin to have doubling, um, doubling digit phenomenon. So yn is not only up to the t to the n, but every time you um, do this iteration, we doubled uh, the correct number of digits, so it has incredible phenomenon of picking up the correct um, incorrect solution and incorrect and high incorrect term. So every time we are doubling because uh, because of that you're multiplying this power of um, two every time. So that's why it looked like this. So if we have this condition and we can have the doubling digit phenomenon, and it's another interesting part is that you can just do simple change of variable to the original differential equation to um, to have this uh, part right there as a zero. So we can have this phenomenon if you want faster convergence. And then you have to retrieve that change of variable back again to get the um, answer back. So we kind of have that phenomenon still in there. I am back to this part of um, this iteration. So what we are about to do is that analyze it, what happened to this iteration, iteration, not assuming any of these things just this one, we started from y equals y0, y0 of x equals y0, and yn plus 1 is in d defined in terms of yn through this diff um, integral operator. In this generality, we can show that um, they converge, and it is a solution of this um, integral equation, therefore it's a differential equation, and so on. This one here is called Picard iteration. Let me write that down. It is showing now that Picard is the name of a mathematician and the iteration that he um, discovered. So next part will be um, the statements, introduction to the statements prove, statements to prove. Thanks.